Greetings, Ian from RTO here. Welcome to a Wednesday Marathon, the day we tackle those big catalogues. And today we have got a viewer's request. Now I'm not quite sure who asked for this, as usual, but it is the band Camelot. A band that have been around war oh, since 1987 and they're from a, they're reformed in Tampa Florida by Thomas Youngblood um, I've, I've, oh, obviously I've heard of this band and I've heard one or two bits but the, when I was asked to do this it was the first time I really sat down and listened to them properly and I'm really impressed to the fact that now that I listen to them quite a bit um, I really enjoy their style of um, power metal uh, I love what they sing about mystical stuff and it's all pretty good um, I've released 13 albums up to now I've had various people through the band um, so we'll do what we usually do just go through them so um, Coming in at number 13, we have the debut album from 1995, and it is called Eternity. And on here we've got Mark Vanderbilt on lead vocals, Thomas Youngblood on guitars, David Pack Pavlico on keyboards, Glenn Barry on bass, Richard Warner on the drums. We've got additional uh, backing vocals by Todd Plant and Leroy Mayers and Howard Helm does some additional keyboards so the first track is the title track and it's called Eternity what I like about the start of these power metal records you've always got this grand entrance uh, uh, of a uh, intro that's really good you've got Thomas on the guitars who's a pretty good guitarist some solid drumming and then it goes into this really good power heavy metal really good track um, Black Tower it's okay Mark's vocal is a little I think it was a little bit weak he couldn't hit the notes as high as the pr uh, next singers but it's still a reason with the track musically it sounds brilliant Call to the Sea some great guitar work here from Thomas. It's just a solid track with some lovely tones on that um, guitar. Um, Proud Nomad comes next. Good vocal from Mark. It's got some great uh, uh, bass line on there as well. It's a really good solid track. Let me get Red Sands. Great guitar so on this and sh lots of shredding. The drumming from Richard Warner is pretty awesome on that one as well. Um, then we get one for the hunted. Love the start to this. It's got that howling wind and the drums come in. Solid track. And then we get my favourite track on this album. Uh, it is called Fire Within. It's that bass blowing, blowing from Glenn that really dominates this. And then you've got lots of nice little textures, your guitars, little bits of shredding and them little twiddly bits. It's, it's called a proper melodic rock track. Warbirds, uh, solid track, nothing wrong with this one. Just good old fashioned power metal, really. And um, what about me? Love the start up here. We've got this lovely keyboard intro from David, really eerie. Uh, it's quite gentle, and then some lovely acoustic solo guitar work from Thomas. Then we get a little uh, instrumental for 50 seconds called Etou Jongleur. It's a nice acoustic um, guitar, quite um, minstrel type thing, really gentle. And the last track is called The Glee Man. It's got a really good intro, uh, some nice keyboards on this and some good drumming. Um, what about this album? It's a really good album, but of all the... Camelot albums that there needs a little be a bit more depth in it um, some of the tracks are great but it just doesn't sound right I've heard some of these live and they sound a lot better live 
Um, but it's still a reasonably good listen, so I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 6 out of 10. Okay, then coming in at number 12, we have the second album from 1997, and it was the last to feature the original vocalist Mark Vanderbilt and founding drummer Richard Warner. So you've got Mark Vanderbilt, uh, Thomas Younggood, Youngblood sorry, on uh, guitars and backing vocals, David Pavlico on keyboards, Glenn Barry on drums, and Greg, sorry, and Richard Warner on the drums. So the first bit is a proper, it's called Ascension. This is one of my favourite Camelite intros. Feels like you're riding through a forest. It's dramatic. And that goes straight into the track Heaven. I love the start of this. The bass line from Glenn is brilliant. Richard's drums are good. But it's the, uh, the vocal from Mark is a little bit weak. Rise Again. Great drumming from Richard. Uh, some great little guitar bits from Tommy. Brilliant stuff. One Day I'll Win. Love the riffs in this. But I do feel that Mark Vanderbilt was probably the weakest singer that's been in Camelot. Because he just didn't... He needed a little bit more guts on that. We're Not Separated. Some fantastic work from Tommy on the guitar on that one. Birth of a Hero. It's probably one of the tracks by this band that I'm not very keen on. And it just didn't do anything for me. Then we get this brilliant instrumental. It's my favourite track on this album. It's just amazing playing. You've got Dave's little keyboard bits come oozing through. A solid bass line from Glenn that keeps the song together. You've got the solid drums... From, um, Richard and then Thomas just puts plenty of shreds and solos brilliant stuff and then we get Sin it's not too bad I, I like the arrangement but I'm not very keen on the vocal delivery on that one Song of Roland it's a gentler stack and Mark sounds really good on these gentle tracks he's got the right voice for this the guitar work again is solid from Thomas Crossing Two Rivers this starts off with some lovely acoustic guitar and then it picks up with some driving heavy metal riffs. Good track. And then Troubled Mind. This is really good. Probably Mark's best vocal that he did with the band. And it's on the last track of the last album he did. It's really good. You've got some Joel Trogan in this as well. It's a good album. But I'm not denying that. I think Mark was the weaker of the singers. Although he did do some good work on this one, especially that last track. Um, but as a musically, they were strong. So I'm going to give this one an RTO ranking of 6.3. Okay, coming in at number 11, we have the 12th album. It was released in 2018, it's called The Shadow Theory. And it's got this, another singer, Tommy Kervik, um, Thomas Glump, Youngblood on guitars. Sean Tibbetts is the bass player now. We've got Oliver, Oliver Patole on um, keyboards, Johan Noonens on drums, guest musicians on here. We've got Lauren Hart, uh, who who's an American singer, who's the, her, whose father um, is Gene Hart. And then we got got Jennifer Halben, who's a German singer, and she's the front woman of symphonic metal band Beyond the Black. Um, the choir is, we've got a choir on this, which is Oliver Hartman, Herbie Langs, Claudie Yang, Annie Behrens, Nadine Rutch, Evelyn Mank, Thomas Dalton, Youngblood, which I'd say is a relative of Thomas Youngblood. First thing up is the mission, one of the intros. It's that power metal, progressive metal, dramatic start, orchestral, guns are blazing, pretty good. And then that goes straight into Phantom Divine, Shadow Empire. Now this features Lauren Hart. Lauren Hart is a very good singer. I do like the 
her vocals with Tommy here and that double bass drumming from Johan is absolutely dynamite. Raven Light comes now next. Like the start of this, everything seems to come in. The beat of the drums, everything comes in on a, the same beat. Uh, the guitars, it's a great vocal from, from Tommy. Absolutely brilliant. Amnesiac, um, it's not too bad. Solid. Burns to, the, to Embrace, my favourite track on this album. I think it's because there's a, the children's choir is wonderful. It makes it something special, really good. Then we get in Twilight Hours, which features Jennifer Happen. Great interplay between Tommy and Jennifer. Um, you've got different octaves, and it all works really well. It's a good, solid track. Kelvar Skin. It's got a good guitar solo on it. It's just a solid track. It's, it's not a bad track. It's not a terrible track it's just a good solid track static comes next very good tra track and the strings on this is some string arrangement it really um, adds to the atmospherics on this one it's a very good vocal from Tom and me then we have another track featuring Lauren Hart this is mindful remedy although you can you can hardly hear her on here uh, there's too much drum on it the drum sort of overpowers the whole song so you can't really hear the the vocals story and heard comes next one of those melodic tracks i like this thing you got a lovely bass line here that drives the song then we get vesperine my crimson boy i love synthetic rock it's just great lots of dramatics and great drumming on here from johan really good the pr the proud and the broken my only criticism of this track it is a little bit long it's six minutes 24 okay there's power metal but it sort of meanders and the backing vocals you just can't hear them because of the drums that have really got the drum mix on that wrong in my opinion then we get Ministrum shadow key not sure about this one it's okay um another good tracks on here but as i said the drum mix it's a bit too much prominent because it sort of drowns out the rest of the band and the vocals some of the backing vocals on this you just can't hear um but it doesn't it sort of puts a bit of a mockery on the album for me so i'm going to give this an rto ranking of 6.5 Okay then, coming in at number 10, we've got the fourth album. This is from 1999, and it's called The Fourth Legacy. Another singer on here, we've got Roy Khan. Thomas Youngblood on the guitars and backing vocals. Glenn Barry on the um, bass. The brilliant drummer, underrated Casey Grillo. Really good um, drummer. Myro on keyboards. Sasha Perez. Faithful Puth um, does additional guitars. He sort of produces and has been part of this band in the background. Thomas Raquel on backing vocals. Dick Bruinberg on additional drums. And Cezia Rizzo, the female vocals on Knights of Arabia. Once again, we start off with this little dramatic instrumental start with some nice strings on it that goes right into the fourth legacy. Great drumming from Casey on here. This is a really good drummer. That double bass drum sounds great. And it's a great vocal from Roy. Absolutely brilliant vocal. He's got a strong, powerful voice. Silent God Goddess. Again, the rolling drums from Casey this time. And you've got this lovely bass line from Glenn that sort of keeps the song together. The engine room on this is terrific. Then we get another short little um, instrumental called Desert Rain. Interesting, it's got some nice uh, guitar from Thomas. A bit of tribal drums on here. Then we get Knights of Arabia. Favourite track, it's got that real uh, Arabian feel from it. The bit, the Desert Rain sort of interacts with this track. So you've got this, these really two good tracks. Um, Roy's voice on this is great. 
Ray, sorry, Roy. Then we get Shadow of the Youth. I love this. It's just. I don't know how to describe this. Listen to it on the headphones. You've got to listen to this under the headphones to really appreciate it. It's just well put together. Great stuff. Um, a Sailor's Hymn. Really nice, gentle arrangement with some lovely keyboard and uh, orchestral arrangements on here. Excellent track. Alexandra. Interesting drumming like this. It sounds mystique and it really works. Let me get the Inquisitor. My favourite vocal from um, from Ray. Roy, sorry. His name is Roy. <laughs> Got me Roy's and Ray's mixed up. It's a great track. Then we get um, Glory. One of my favourites on here. It starts a very gentle minstrel sort of thing. Sort of thing you'd get with Blackmore's Night. You know, that sort of thing. Really good. Until Kingdom Come. I like the driving wrist on this. That double bass drum really sounds good. Luna Sanctum. It's a very, it's a long track. It could have been shaved by a couple of minutes. It just twiddles around. It's very hard to believe that this album is actually 24 years old. And it sounds great. It really is a strong album. I like playing this one. Um, I'll give this one an RTO ranking of 6.8. First sip of coffee for the day. Okay, coming in at number 9, we go to 2015 for Haven. Uh, on here we've got Tommy Kervik on lead vocals, Thomas Youngblood on the guitars again, Sean Tibbetts on the bass, we've got Oliver Paolo Tay on keyboards, Casey Grillo on the drums, additional musicians. We have Alicia Weiglutz, who's from... Swedish melodic death metal band called Arch Enemy. Troy Donkley now is just the Tim Whish Whistles. Now Troy is obviously part of Nightwish. Charlotte Vessels, uh, she's in. She's from the Brilliant Delane, which is a band that I'm actually listening to at the moment. I love Charlotte's vocals; really good singer. And then we've got Cloudy Yang on backing vocals. Shasha Parath on additional guitars. Darren. Dennis Hornrung on counterbass and Myro on keyboards. Starts off with a, a, a track called um, Fallen Star. Great vocal from Tommy. I love the driving riffs on this one. Insomnia. That synthetic sound is absolutely brilliant. The between interplay between Oliver and Thomas on here. The keyboards and the guitars play off each other very well on that track then we get my favorite track on this one it is called a citizen zero it's got an eerie guitar start with some nice textures uh it's just then you get this lovely melodic guitar sound uh, it's just worth it for that bit in the middle it's really is strong then we get Vale of elysium i love how this starts that great comes straight in with some double bass drums Kicking away and a great vocal from Tommy. Tommy, under grey skies. Now this features Charlotte Vessels and Troy Donnelly. Great sort of Celtic film. Now Charlotte has got this wonderful voice. Um, it's got it's really good. It's probably my second favourite track on the album. My therapy. Interesting song. A great vocal from Tommy. But it's the keyboard sounds are on this I really interest Myro is really good on the keyboards then we get a let it's a little keyboard intro that goes straight into end of innocence really good it's a bit it's, it's a lovely symphonic metal sound a great vocal some driving riffs beautiful copalix from uh, this feature Charlotte again you can hardly hear her on this. She's sort of in the background. 
Yeah, you can just about hear her. Liar, liar. This features Alessia Whitegloves. Shame you can't hear her. Uh, the voice is, you know, the sometimes they get the mix a little bit wrong and it seems everything else seems to drown, drown a voice out. Here's to the fall. It's a real gentle track. I like that. Revolution again. It's Alicia White Boots. Growling vocal on this. She's rich. She's for a female singer. She's got a really growly voice, and it sounds pretty good on that. Then we get Haven. Love the start of this. It's just dramatic. Nice strings. Good way to end the album. Again, some of the mixing on this is a little bit off for me. Um, I think if they'd got that right, it'd have been a bit higher because you've got two really great female s singers. So I'm going to give this one an RTO ranking of 7 out of 10. Okay, coming in at number 8, we've got the 6th album from 2003, Epica. This album is along with its sequel, The Black Halo, is a rock opera inspired by the story of Goethe's Force Epica. While The Black Halo tells Goethe has two parts. Most of the lyrics were written before the actual music was composed, and the album inspired the name of the band Epica after its release. So there you go. Bits of trivia. So, who's on this? We've got Roy Kahn on the vocals, Thomas Youngblood on the guitars, of course, Glenn Barry on the bass, Casey Grello on the drums. We've got Mari Youngblood, who's um, Thomas's good lady. Myro's doing the keyboards again. Sasha is doing the additional guitars. Lucia Trillio, guitar solo on one track. Gunter Weirno does a little bit more keyboards. J.P. Ringvold on key keyboards. We've got Robert Hukano Risso, who does the choir vocals. So it starts off with a thing called a prologue, which is an instrumental. I love the start of this. you got a ticking of the clock. Gives it that little bit of eeriness. Then we get Centre of the Universe that features Mrs. Youngblood. Uh, really good singer Mar Mari is uh, great um, interplay with Roy as well excellent stuff then we get Farewell uh, some ferocious drumming from Casey on this absolutely stunning I don't know how he does it and not miss a beat it's absolutely dramatic great vocal from Roy on this one then we get um, Interlude 1 which is Opiate Soul. It's one minute long. Interesting keyboards from Myro. Eerie. Which goes lovely into the next track. Edge of Paradise. Again the keyboard theme carries on. And then you get this great vocal. And the driving riffs. Excellent stuff. Wanderer. It's a power ballad. But it's absolutely amazing. It's got an amazing guitar solo on it from Thomas. Then we get Interlude 2 which is Omen, which is 40 seconds. Just think more, there's a little introduction to the next track, which is The Descent of the Archangel. Love the start to this. I like the whistly keyboard sounds, uh, the, the, the great shivery voice, melodic sound, really good. Interlude 3, At the Banquet, which is another 30 seconds, and it gives it, it's got this sort of minstrel sort of at the court of the king sort of thing which goes straight into a, a feast for the vein again i love this it just these interludes just flow lovely into the tracks it's got some nice keyboards it's got some really nice sound on the coldest winter night great vocal from um, roy on this it's got the vocal's got a little bit of sadness in his voice and it's got some lovely acoustic guitars. Then we get Lost and Damned. There's so many good stars to tracks on this album. This one has got some like a cello, it's got a marching drum, it's a lovely beat and a great guitar solo. Helena's theme, featuring Mari Youngblood again. Very short a piece of music. 
It's a lovely vocal from Mari. Then we get Interlude 4, which is Dawn. Sort of carries on from Helena's theme. Um, it's a nice little bit of instrumental and some spoken word. And then we get my favourite track on here. It's called The Morning After Carry On. The last, least Helena Stream Interlude 4 and this one really just work together and you have to listen to this like this i think it's got a great bass line from glenn and the vocal from tommy is excellent you've got some great guitar bits from thomas and then the, we've got three ways to epica which again features mary young blood a nice little ending to the album sort of gentle and then it just disappears I just feel a shame this is at number eight because it's a brilliant album. It's a great concept. So you never, you just have to put it on and play. Uh, flows really well. So I'm going to give this one an RTO ranking of 7.2. Okay, coming at number seven. Ninth album from 2010. Poetry, poetry for the Poisoned. And this was the last album to feature Roy Khan. And also the first with um, the original bass player, Sean Tibbetts, who left the band in 1992 before they released their first album. So you got Roy Khan on the vocals, Thomas Youngblood on guitars, Sean Tibbetts on bass. Oliver Pelletre on keyboards. Casey Grillo is on the drums. And we got Bjorn Olaf Egerman. Who's worked with quite a few bands like Allerjohn, Dismana, Mundy, Terra. And he does a bit of vocals. So the first track is called The Great Pendulum. Which features Bjorn Strid. I like the whispery vocals on this. Gives it a little bit of, let's say, a little bit of atmosphere and eeriness. Then we got If Tomorrow Came. Case is absolutely on fire on the drums here. You got a lovely bass line from Sean, really eerie, and a great vocal from Roy. Fantastic. Dear Editor, that's just a very short piece. It's got some eerie sound effects on it. Then we get the Zodio, which features John Olivia, who is an American musician. Uh, he, we've known him from Savatage. So uh, he's on it, and Amanda Somerville. She's uh, she's been in some other, done some singing as well. It's a really good singer. I really like this song though. It's you've got Roy singing, you've got. John singing and you've got Amanda and the three of them really sort of play off each other. It's an excellent track. Then we get Hunter Season which features someone called Gus G. He plays with the band Firewind. He's played with Mystic Poetry, Night Rage, Arch Emery, Dream Evil and he's also been in Ozzy Osbourne's band. Great sort of thing. Uh, it's a great solo from Gus G. Very, very good. House on the Hill. Now this features Simone Simmons, who of course is in Epica. Great singer is Simone. Uh, and I think this is one of the best duos ever on a Camelot album. Simone is just on fire. I love her vocals, and she does a real good duo here with Roy. Then we get Necropolis. Brilliant. The keyboard. On here from Oliver is fantastic. Uh, my thought, my train of thoughts, the backing vocals on this are really good. It sounds like Simone, which is not sort of credited with it. Seal of Wolven Years, a great track, great start, proper symphonic metal start, dramatic, great vocal, drums coming through. Then we get Poetry for the Poisoned. I like the start from this. The drumming from Casey is terrific. Um, this is quite an e a little epic um, part. You've got part one, Incubus. That's great. The part two of this is so long. Wonderful guitars and another great vocal from Simone on that. This is my favourite track on this album. 
Uh, it's all over. This has got Amanda Somerville on again. It's a very short piece. And you've got a lovely angelic Amanda Somerville singing on that. Descent. Deception, sorry. This is some great guitar work from Thomas. Again, it just fades away into no nothing. Absolutely brilliant track. My favourite track on the album, as I said. Then we get Once Upon a Time. Some great guitars in this. I love how this changes tempo halfway through. You've gone from this really melodic and then it comes at you at 100 miles an hour. Brilliant stuff. Another good album. Solid stuff from Camelot. It's one of them you just play, put on and play. Uh, great album. So I should give this an RTO ranking of 7.4. Okay then, number six, we go to the eighth album, released in 2007, Ghost Opera. And this is the first studio album that features keyboardist Oliver Peltray and the last with Glenn Barry. So it's Roy Kahn, Thomas Youngblood, Glenn Barry, Casey Grillo, Oliver, Paolo Tay, and we've got additional orchestrations from Mauro. Simone's back singing on this one. Amanda Somerville's here again. So we've got the obligatory little opening piece called Solitaire. It's got some violins and strings. It's eerie and dramatic. Rule of Rule the World comes next. The violin is still being used in this one. Some great drumming from Casey. The gr Thomas's guitar riffs are strong really good then we get the title track ghost opera i love the keyboards from oliver in here it, it's just absolutely brilliant and then you then you get it coupled with some great double bass drumming from casey my favorite track on this one is the next one it's called the human stain and it's mostly for the great industrial sort of bass line from glenn it's really meaty uh it really drives the song along it's a fantastic song. And then we got this Bullshit featuring Simone. Wonderful vocal from Simone again. Thomas's guitar work is really good, but it's it's Simone and I love how it ends off that shattering of glass. Fantastic. Love you to death. Sounds we've got a harp on this. It's a wonderful. I don't, I don't know if it's done on the keyboard or the actual harp, but it really does give it atmospheric. Uh, you've got some acoustic guitars on this. A really nice song. The violin just adds to it as well. And then you've got Amanda Somerville singing on it. It's a pretty solid track. Up through the ashes. Great vocal on this. One of Roy's best. I love the cl the sort of cloudy riffs. Uh, and cloudy, they're sort of muffled in it, but it sounds good, really good. Morning Star, the star, of this is just fantastic. It's got like oh, this monk chant, and then Amanda and Roy do some great vocals on this as well. Silence of Dance, and more of Casey's brilliant drumming on here. Some great shredding from Thomas on this. Then we get Anthem, really nice track with a orchestral. And piano very gentle as well and then Eden Echo classic power metal here great vocal from Roy then power chords driving uh, as well from Thomas and some great drumming another strong album um, I play this one and play this quite a lot I keep going back to this one um, unfortunately it hasn't moved up <laughs> but I'll give this an RTO ranking of 7.5 Okay, coming in at number five is their most current album, and it was released on the March the 17th of this year, 2023, and it's called The Awakening. It's the first album in five years. It's making the longest gap between two Camelot albums. So who's the band at the moment? It's Tommy Kervik on lead vocals, Thomas Youngblood on guitars, Sean Tibbetts on the bass, Oliver Paltai on guitars, uh, keyboard, sorry, and we've got Alex Ling Landenberg on drums now. First track on here is the 
the typical overture. Uh, like most power metal stuff, it's just dramatic and eerie. Then we get The Great Divide, a brilliant song. It's just full of power. Uh, and you hear some great drumming from this new this newer drummer, Alex. And you've got some great keyboards from Oliver. He's a great keyboard player, really gives it some dramatics. Even Tide, great vocal from Tommy. The keyboards from Oliver are great, really strong. Then we get one more flag in the ground, very good track. The solo from Thomas is brilliant. Opus of the Night, a grossed requiem. My favourite track. It is a proper requiem. Lots of choral singing, some great drumming, some guitar bits that are really good. Um, nice textures as well. Then we get Midsummer Eve. Now, this features a celloist called Tina Goop and Florian Yansk on violin. Uh, very Celtic. I do like this. Some nice acoustic guitars on that as well. Blood Moon, solid track. Great drumming from Alex. Absolutely. He's up there with Casey. Night Sky, some great keyboards on this from Oliver. It's got such a nice tune as well. It's got a lovely tone on that keyboard on that one. Then we get the Looking Glass. I like how this starts. You've got this fading riff coming in and the drums start rolling. Uh, gentle and then it just builds up and it's an absolute brilliant song. New Babylon now this features Simone Simmons from Epica again and Melissa Bonney who's in a bad band called Ad In Infinitum and was the vocalist of Evermore and Rage of Light. Really too good. It's brilliant. You've got these two great female power metal singers and Tommy absolutely brilliant and Thomas's guitar work is brilliant probably the second favorite track on this album um, then we get Willow it's got a gravelly voice on here <laughs> it's really good great vocal uh, my path and on forevermore dramatic drumming keyboards or a heavy metal orchestra a great vocal from Tommy Emphimera, I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, it's dramatic. I love all this dramatic music. And it sounds like it's like an end of an epic movie as well. Great album. This band is still relevant as they were in 1995. They are still producing great music. I think they're still a force to be reckoned with with this one. So I'm going to give this one an RTO ranking of 7.6. Okay then, number four is the 10th album released in 2012. And it's called Silver Thorn. And this is the first to feature Tommy Kerbick as the lead singer. And the third comes concept after... Epica and the Black Halo. This concept and story are original features the 19th century girl, little girl called Jolene, who dies tragically in an Agnes witnessed by her twin brothers. The story deals with how the girl's affluent family handles the traffic event, leading it to cover up secrets and betrayals. Oh. So the vocals on here are done by Tommy Carbick. Uh, you've got Thomas Youngblood on the guitars, of course. You've got Sean Tibbetts on bass, and Oliver Paltai on the keyboards, Casey Grillo on the drums. So of course, we start off with a dramatic um, intro. Um, what it's called Manus Di, dramatics, choral vocals, eerie. Then we got Sancrimony and the in brackets Angel of the Afterlife. Now this features a female singer called Elias Rudd. Uh, it's a Swedish singer. And she is from Armanath. And also Alicia White. Glutz is back. 
through Smarge Enemy, of course. My favourite track as well. Oh, what a thing you've got are some pranos that, from the ladies. Absolutely brilliant. And then you've got that gravelly Elise vocal. And then you've got Tommy's great vocal. Three different voices that actually work perfectly together on this. It's probably why I like it. It's so diverse, that track. Ashes to Ashes. This is Casey's drumming. He kicks in with some great stuff. Great vocal from Tommy. Throw in some great uh, Thomas riffs and you got a solid track. Torn. Oh, I love this. It's got power. It's typical symphonic metal rock. Great vocal from Tommy again. Then we get Song for Jolene. Nice track. Gentle, really soothing. Uh, it's a sad song. But it's a really good song. Then we get Veritas features Elias Rudd. She's a great singer. Uh, very operatic. I love her solo bit in this as well. She's got a fantastic voice. My Confession, really good song. Great solo on this from Thomas. One of his best. Silverthorn, really theatrical start. This, this crescendo of a... Of a orchestra the string arrangements fantastic it's a great track all round falling like the fahrenheit again elise sings on this she sounds brilliant her voice is just incredible and you got that little sort of keyboard stab on this as well really good track solitaire comes now next love cases drumming on this it's very intricate it's not a case of just crash bang wallop here it's hitting the drum in the right places and the cymbals and it keeps the whole thing flowing well then we got prodigal son which is three parts it's a bit of an epic you love these things it starts with these bells sounds like funeral bells eerie uh this is probably one of Thomas's best solos. It's so eerie and full of atmosphere. Then you get Tommy singing on this, and then you've got Elisa again with that sort of gravelly sort of vocal that she's got. And then you've got this thing called Continuum. It's silent for a bit, and then this set cello solo. Funny ending. This is a great album. I think this is the best album that Tommy sang on. It's again, it's again Camelot albums. You don't just pick tracks. You have to play the whole album. It's just how it flows. It's just so good. And this is brilliant. It's a, it's a very dark story, um, but it's a fantastic song. It's on this, so I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of seven point eight. So here we are, the top three always hard to pick your top three especially when this band is absolutely solid and consistent well, there's not a bad album in this bunch to be quite honest um so my number three is from 2001 the fifth album album karma so it's roy khan on vocals thomas youngblood on guitars glenn barry's on the bass casey grillo is on drums we got Myro doing the keyboards and orchestrations again. Sasha Parath is doing additional guitars. And we've got Faruka Shadada on the Shakusi, which is a, an Eastern sort of uh, instrument, I believe. We've got Liv Nina Mosen on vocals as well. Olaf Haya doing the choir vocals. We've got Sinzarizo on the um, vocals as well. We've got Robert Heck Rizzo as well. So it starts off, of course, with the lovely intro. It's called Regalus Operatura. Feels like you're sailing on the sea. Absolutely brilliant. Then we get Forever. The start of this is wonderful. You've got a great bass line from the brilliant Glenn Barry. Casey's drumming is good and... A great vocal from Roy on that one. I do like that track. The Wings of Despair. That lovely double bass tone from Casey rumbles through the track. 
wonderful. The spell. Uh, love this type of metal. It's melodic. The guitar work from Thomas, from Tom Thomas on this is wonderful. Great stuff. Don't you cry. Acoustic start. Gentle rock track. Nice vocal from Ray from Roy. Sorry, and then he hits them high notes really well. Then we get the toe title track Karma. Love the start of this. It's so choral. Great drumming and some lovely piano work on this. I think this is um, Myro. Uh, it's just a really solid piece of music. The light I shine on you. This is all about a brilliant bass and drum. The engine room drives this song. Everyone else puts in their, as I say, their six pendant and it's a really good track. Temples of God. It's a great slow melodic track. It chugs away at a, gr at a great speed. It, and what I mean by what I mean by it, it's not fast. It sort of thing. It's really good. There's some great vocals on here from Roy. Across the Highlands, you do feel like you're going across the Highlands of Scotland on this. It's because of Casey's drum roll. It feels like you're on a horse. It's absolutely brilliant. I do like the um, lyrics on this really good then we get my favorite track uh, it's called Elizabeth uh, it's an epic it's 15 minutes long so the first piece is called mirror mirror I love this it's a great vocal from Roy it's gentle everything's gentle about this and delicate then requiem requiem for the innocent we start to build up the beat uh, Again, the vocals are on this. The guitars are getting stronger as we go through this. And then we get Fall From Grace. Which is the galloping, thunderous part of this song. Lots of great shredding from Thomas. And then halfway through, it stops. And then starts up a different tempo completely. But it doesn't feel like it's disjointed. And then you've got this sort of sort of poppy keyboard thing that sounds very Japanese. It's just a terrific track to end the album. One of the best tracks this band have ever done. Once again, it's just an, an album you'd put on and play all the way through. You can't pick your favourite tracks off of this because they're all good. Um, some great guitar work from Thomas throughout the album. Some of Casey's best drumming he did with the band. So I'm going to give this one an RTO ranking of 8 out of 10. Coming at number 2 then. This is the third album from 1998. And it's Siege Perilous. Oh, I hate it when I have these, long, these weird spellings. Because I, I really struggle sometimes. It was the first album that featured Roy Khan on vocals. And Casey... Grillo, and it was the final album that featured David Pavlico on keyboards. So we've got Roy, Tommy, David, Glenn Barry, Casey Kilo, and additional musician is Tor Osprey on your car, acoustic guitar on Siege. First track is Providence. The intro to this is dramatic, theatrical. Then you get First bit of Casey's drumming, boom. S sets out his stall straight away. Great light bass line from Glenn Barry. And then first time we hear Roy. Woo, what a great track. Then we got Millennium. The piano on this is wonderful from David. Uh, it, you think it shouldn't fit on this tr track, but it does. You got a lovely rolling drum rock from Casey. Trouble bass drum sounds fantastic. King's Eyes comes next. It's just got that classic power metal riff, isn't it? It is. Then it gets a little bit quiet, and then it comes back in. The shredding's great, and some sharp drumming here from Casey. Expedition. Love the start of this. It's got a sort of a, a keyboard, just so eerie. Really draws you in. 
Where I Rain, rain. Uh, it's a medieval sort of sounding start which I like it's got that sort of renaissance sort of uh, period really good a great bass line from from Dan terrific vocal from Roy then we got riding commercial probably one of the most commercial sounding songs this band ever did I like that harmony vocals on this they are terrific part in visions once again Casey's drumming is just great. Lots of little interactions on the keyboard from David. Excellent track. Once a Dream. Again, it's very commercial sounding, but it sounds good. Um, and then I really love Thomas's guitar work on this. It's got a fantastic guitar solo. Then we got Siege. Lovely guitar work. This is where we've got that acoustic from the this guy called Torre uh, really adds to it what really in thing and it's a good way to end the album as much as I enjoy them first two albums by Camelot this is the one that I thought really hit them got them going I think this is the first distinctive and the direction they went in the album uh, Adding Roy Khan to the as the vocal has re really did help them, and as much as Mark is a reasonable good singer, Roy took it to the next level for them. So I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 8.2. I'm okay, my number one. Uh, this is the one I keep going back to. It's the seventh album that was released in 2005. And it's the Black Halo. Now this is um, another epic uh, concept album inspired by Go Through His First. This is the part two of like the Epica. And on here we have got Roy Khan, Thomas Youngblood, Glenn Barry on bass, Casey Grillo, additional personnel we've got. Myro on the keyboards, Sasha on guitars. Got some extra um, keyboards, solo, some Jens Jan Johansson on this. We got uh, was it? lots of people playing bits as well. Uh, we got Shagrath Demir Bior who plays Men Menpesto character. Sinzo Rizzo plays a cabaret singer. Simone Simmons plays Marguerite on the haunting. Jeff Rudd, the usher. Mary Youngblood uh, plays a ca character called Helena on Mento Mori and Abandon. Annalise Youngblood, which is the daughter of Mary and Thomas, she plays Baby Lorena. Andre Nengfield on the bass and Wolfgang Dori. Detrick on oboe. So lots of people on here. Opens up with the march of the Mephisto featuring Shagarath. Uh, good track. Roy's vocal is great. And then you've got this growly vocal as well. It really works. Now I'm not into growly vocals, but this just absolutely works. When the lights are down, really good. Casey's drumming on this. His top draw and a great bass line from Glenn as well booms it out. The Haunting Somewhere in Time featuring the wonderful Simone Simmons. Oh, what a vocal! She works well with Roy on this. It's that, that voice echoes. Excellent track, wonderful Soul Society. Another stonking track. Uh, it's just the it's Casey's drumming it really is good then we get interlude one and it's called DA greater it's just a little bit of intro music which goes into abandoned fiction Mari Youngblood it's a nice gentle track it's a great vocal for Mari again Roy compliments her as well amazing vocal this pain some great guitar from worse from Thomas typical heavy metal sounds like an Iron Maiden guitar solo from Adrian Smith 
really is good moonlight this is all about uh, Glenn's bass line really strong riff really drives that song along I love that song then we get interlude 2 which is Assassino Maltuso lovely bit of French accordion you got Caesar Presento playing a cabaret singer it's quite good then we get the title track the Black Halo mega guitar solo uh, this sounds fantastic I love how the, the, everyone sort of comes together on that it, just wonderful playing nothing never dies great vocal from Roy on this the backing vocals just give it extra depth that put in a great drum then we have Momentum Morai which features Shag Rath and Maori Youngblood not my, just my favourite track on the album my favourite track by the band oh, you wouldn't think you've got Roy putting a great vocal that sort of roughness of Shagrath and Mary Young's angelic voice just works throw in a few bits from Thomas on the guitar it's just a fantastic track Interlude 3 which is Midnight 12 Tolls for New Day oh the bells ringing it just is atmospheric which goes straight into the last track Serenade the riffs are good, the lovely keyboards. Thomas is just ripping up them riffs. It's an excellent solo and a great vocal on this. I just love this album. I think this is Roy Kahn's best ever performance in Camelot. As I said, he is, he is my favourite singer from Camelot. He's, he was the all-round singer. It's just got some excellent playing here from Thomas as well. Um, Casey's drumming is phenomenal on this another fine performance again you put it on and play it all the way through it's a great concept it's a great story it flows well and I love playing this album so I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 8.3 so there we go a band that I do, I've always sort of liked, but I've really gotten into them now after listening to all their albums. I just think they're very consistent. They don't muck around. They don't change their sound. They, all they did was develop it. And I think this one, they got it absolutely spot on, on the Black Halo. Okay, that's all for today. Because it's always a big one on a Wednesday. But we'll be back tomorrow. And we've got Battle of the Debuts. And this is the Battle for Wales. That's what I've called it. We're going to be looking at the Manic Street Preachers. And the Stereophonics. And tomorrow we're doing a camera's view. And it's a the brilliant performance of Tubular Bells 2. By Mike Oldfield up at Edinburgh Castle. And also tomorrow night is live stream or dinner time if you're watching in Los Angeles or afternoon if you're watching in New York. So have a great day everyone. The sun's out. Although I had to put the blind down because it was blinding me. And I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great day everyone.